And this is Alan Woods from Woods Square. <laughs> right. um, Alan, take us back to 2015, November 2015 when we first met. What did the business look like back then? Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, 2015, we had a turnover of 285,000 and profits about 65,000 in that year. How many people for 285,000? We had uh, four in that year. Four, four in that year. So, so we're doing about, uh, what's that, um, uh, 70,000 70, a person in revenue. Mm -hmm. That's a person in revenue. Uh, so that's 2015, and we met at a uh, 2020 conference, if I recall. Uh, mm -hmm. I spoke for about an hour or so. And what was it that triggered you to do something different? What was like the thing that you were looking for? Or what, what did I say that said, I need to do something with this? Um, I think it was just the whole um, embracing that, that change of mindset, different mindset. Um, I was probably getting a bit dis disenchanted, I suppose, with the profession, and just didn't really want to just keep doing sort of compliance work and the sort of the, the normal normal sort of processes that we were doing. Um, and your approach was just quite refreshing at the time in terms of the what you were saying and how you delivered it. Um, I think from memory, you did the fifty minutes straight after lunch as well, which is always the, the great worst. shift. Yeah, yeah, it is. This time. Yeah. Um, and I actually got a copy of your, your second book. Apparently, the first one's better, but you know we won't go there. <laughs> and so that was fifteen. Uh, Two thousand sixteen, the year's gone. What did our revenue look like in sixteen? Um, <coughs> revenue for sixteen was four hundred five thousand. Uh, so, so that's just the end of December. So one hundred twenty thousand pound lift uh, for the full year, because you got to start with us pretty much straight away, I think, from memory. Yeah. And uh, and then for so that's sixteen. What was the head count in sixteen? Uh, Headcounts was at the end of 16 was seven. Okay, seven, so we've got some capacity. What do you think we'll do, or what have we done so far in the first quarter of 17, and what does the year look like? And uh, so far in the first uh, first quarter, we, we've secured 167,000 pounds worth of project work. Um, Is it 160 or 70? 167. 167 of project? Yeah. Um, okay. So this year we're hoping to hit probably 600,000 in terms of revenue. And what do you think the profit will be on 600,000? Because I know you like to spend money as well, but what's the profit? Um, yeah, if you, if you ignore the uh, tax deductible trip to Australia, um, possibly possibly about 200,000 in terms of profit. Okay, so we were 60,000 in 15, we're gonna be 200, profit, 200,000 in uh, 17, and our revenue has gone from 285 to 600, so we've doubled revenue and tripled profit. Right, it's the plan. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, which is great. Uh, no, you know, what was your average hourly rate? Do you remember what it was back then when you first started? Um, average hourly rate when we did it actually at Kickstart last year was I think we about twenty eight pound an hour. I think or something ridiculous. So. Twenty twenty eight pounds. So, so Martin, uh, well done. Uh, slightly better than than, uh, than Alan here. So we've really done a lot of good things, right? But tell us um, uh, what have you actually been doing? What have you done? What have you learned? You know, to get that big uplift in double revenue and triple profit. Um, I think the main thing is we've got we've got a great team. Um, obviously, what's the name? So I've got to say that. So uh, we, have, we have got a really good team. Um, <coughs> we took on Dan as the marketing person. I might just put that down a bit there. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah sorry, got my flu, so it's a bit, a bit awkward. Um, <laughs> so hey, actually, got, Dan, can you bring it down a bit, please? Bring it down, please. We've got Dan. The volume. Yeah. Dan doing the full time marketing. Um, Lee's just joined us at the beginning of uh, this year for the client services coordinator. Um, and we, the first thing we actually did was we brought back timesheets. Um, we've been trading for, for nine years, put you that you know fixed fees, no timesheets. That's what everyone was telling us when we were on these courses. You don't need to do time. Um, but it was at the firm and event last year with with Rob. He was the first person that actually told us to look at the numbers, look at that average hourly rates, you know, measure measure what you're doing, and then you can identify areas where you're actually not being as efficient as you might be. Um, and that obviously, you know, highlighted in the fact that we're, our average hourly rate was, was was far, far too low. So we've brought back timesheets. We've got a great team. Now we've got a marketing person, Dan. Uh, what else have we been doing? Because there's more than that. Uh, <coughs> um, yeah, more than that, I suppose, is just having the confidence in the ability to be able to price properly and then deliver on those um, services. Um, lots of the stuff that we've done so far is, has allowed um, me, I suppose, to be able to go up there and have the time to be able to have those conversations with clients. Um, you know, Dan's doing a lot of the marketing, that's taken a lot of, lot of the work that I was uh, trying to do badly uh, up to that point. So that's allowed me then to have the capacity to be able to have the meetings with clients, uh, meetings with prospects in particular, and actually then be able to generate those extra, extra project work. So with double revenue and triple profit, 
What was your scorecard score today? I think it was 160 or something like that? Yeah, 168 for me. Um, I think I was the highest, so I'm not sure if that means I'm an optimist or, or what, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it was around about 150. Do you remember what it was last year? <coughs> it, was actually, it was actually higher. Um, try and purpose this time to be a bit more, a bit more honest, a bit more brutal, um, and actually understanding the context of the questions that bit better. Uh, this time around, I actually sort of made them uh, score slightly, slightly lower. I think about 192 last year, um, so it's, it's dropped slightly. Um, but we've got a meeting Friday to, to to put in place an implementation plan for for moving it forward. So, both, so uh, well, certainly be more realistic about what the scores are. Yeah, cool. cool. What else have you been doing? What are, what's the what's the key projects for price up front? Timesheets, marketing. Um, we've got Kickstart going on. You have the the huddles and the, and the themes going on. Uh, that that's happening. Uh, what else have you been doing? Um, I think I think the themes have probably been the most. I um, think that's had the biggest impact um, because we got the whole team involved on that. Bring, bringing the timesheets back, um, we felt that might have been a bit of a challenge to get people to actually want to do that. Um, you know, not, not having done it for years and then all of a sudden say, by the way, we're bringing timesheets back. Um, but the whole team are on board with it. They understand the, the commercial reason for us to do that as a business. Um, and just by doing that last year, we've driven the, the average hourly rates up over £70. Um, we've been able to have a couple of nights out at the uh, casino was the first um, theme, so we had a casino night um, and then the guys went to Bongo's Bingo with Benga, the Benga boys um, in Liverpool because of the result of the, the, the quarter after that, so um, that, that's had a, a real real big impact. So with the themes, um, what uh, what's the impetus of the themes? What's the themes all about for you? The theme has, has been really since we went on the kickstart day has always been about trying to get more, more efficient, more capacity from the team uh, and making sure that we're doing the right things in terms of being more more chargeable um, and understanding then when, we, when we're not being chargeable, what are those tasks that we're doing which actually we could perhaps get to outsource or offshore or, or get someone else on board to do. Um, so the, the first, first theme was average hourly rate was the focus, second one has been trying to identify what it is that we need to stop doing, um, so that's been the focus of the, the sort of the first six months worth of those themes. Okay, so uh, as far as uh, value pricing, what pro what sort of projects have you been doing uh, for your value as fees work? Um, it, it mainly mainly tax planning, um, so probably everyone in the room will do tax planning work of, of one sort or another. Um, so linking it to, to the actual outcomes and the results that we're able to get. Um, obviously, we can quantify that before we go into the meetings as well, as you showed today. So that makes that much easier for businesses to actually say yes when they know what they're actually saying yes to. Um, but probably the biggest thing that we've got um, over the last um, six, seven months um, has been actually working with businesses to acquire other businesses um, and value basing that, that, value pricing that based on uh, the value of the business they're looking to acquire. So yeah, that's been a big give, me, give me an example of that. Uh, what, what do you mean? And how have you, have you priced that? Um, we've, got, we've got one client uh, we, we picked up last year, probably about this time last year, uh, engineering business based uh, just, just local to us. Um, he'd come back from America, he'd been living in America for, for a number of years um, and wanted to, to buy, buy a business back in the UK. Um, he'd been to an accountant near to us and hadn't been given the advice that he wanted or needed. Um, came to us, uh, we value based that initial project to help him buy that business, um, which in that project probably was only worth around about £5,000. Um, ongoing work off that for accountancy fees of around about 15000 a year. Um, but he's now in the process of buying three other businesses and just from him we should secure, I would say, probably uh, well, three new businesses because he's acquiring those businesses, so another three lots of £15,000 um, plus I would say probably close to about £80,000 worth of implementation success fees on those as well. Awesome. Okay, cool. What does the future look like? Tell us about the future. Uh, you're doing a lot of things now. You're really just getting started. We're only sort of 15, 18 months into this. Not even 18 months. Uh, so what does this business look like in the next five years? Um, business probably looks like in terms, in terms of new offices, because we're moving office at the moment. Um, so it, the, the office is going to look like Google's thrown upon them. Uh, it's going to be all the Google colours. Uh, it's going to be much brighter, much more of a, an open kind of environment. Uh, hot desk in, you know, sit stand kind of um, environment for the desks that we use as well. So just trying to create an environment where people actually want to come and work, uh, want to try and get involved with us as a team. Um, and ultimately want to try and build a business that within sort of four years, four years time 
um, it operates without myself and Tracy. Um, so the team are, are sort of here to, to to build that business and sort of take it on to that that next step after that point. So basically, partner productivity down to zero is the plan. Well, some might say mine is already zero. Okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, try, trying to get it so that our involvement is more that kind of working, working on the business rather than in the business, um, and getting the team to actually be able to drive the business forwards. Um, after you know, so that, so that we're more focused on, I suppose, the strategy and sort of you know doing other things outside of work. Awesome, and whatever size it happens to be, uh, what of the resources that we've provided are you using the most and have the most success with? Um, <coughs> we're using Elevate, so we start using that straight away. Um, it does only take 10 minutes to kind of get that working, so that, that is true, it takes, it, it takes you know, seconds to do that. Uh, we've got great feedback off that, one was uh, off the last one went out, went to um, the Enterprise uh, graduate manager at Liverpool John Moores University, um, and she replied back to say, would you mind if I shared this with all of our students and all of our graduates, um, so that they can actually see this, because I really like the content of the, the newsletter. Um, so that's been fantastic for, for that, just for that something that just happens automatically. Um, and I think stemming off that learning hub has been this, this sort of one of the, the best things that we've been able to get access to as a Magnify member. Um, so it allows our team to actually learn the processes of how to actually deliver certain things so that it's, it's not just, you know, me or Tracy or someone else trying to be able to tell them or show them they've actually got something there, a proven model shortcuts that they can actually follow to, to be able to get up to, up to speed uh, that much quicker. Awesome. So uh, final, final question. Uh, what words of wisdom, words of advice would you give this illustrious group of accountants in front of you? What would you tell them to do if you looked at yourself, you know, previously where they're seen today? Because you're a little bit ahead, you have a little you've got the highest score in the room. Uh, what would you tell them to do? I think, I think for me it's just that, that timesheets thing. Um, that was probably the single biggest thing that, that we did as a result of the, the firm in our event last year. Um, we came along, sat at the back, Paul Dunn was there as well, I remember Paul being there and almost, I don't know how he contained himself after you mentioned timesheets and bringing them back, but um, I think when you say timesheets, accountants ultimately think, oh, you're going to start charging by the hour and it's this, it brings back these bad memories of, I don't like recording time, I don't know why I'm doing that anymore. Um, but from a business perspective, certainly from a business that, that effectively leverages your expertise and your knowledge, there's no better measure, actually, when you, when you think about it properly, um, to actually record that and actually implement that and be able to make changes to it. Um, and if you don't know what that is, how, you, how can you even start to, to make those changes? So if, if there was one thing I'd, I'd suggest doing it is that, sort of trying to record what it is that you do, what it is currently, and then you can just start making very small changes to it. But that across the team, if you've got a number of people in the office, just makes a massive difference. Awesome. Well, mate, uh, thank you. Thanks for sharing and looking forward to many years to come of great results. Please thank Alan from Wood Square. <laughs>